So today's goal is to really help you think through all of these strategies. And I know that there's a lot here, but the good news is that you're gonna get this recording and all this content will be with you. So we're gonna go through brief experiences today and then you're gonna to get to take this with you. We're gonna go through physiological regulation. We're gonna think about self-care. We're gonna think about relationships, how we manage our thoughts, how we manage our life smartly, how it's important to just do things that we enjoy even in these difficult times, and then forgiveness, which I'm still working on. So we're gonna start off with the basics, just basically breathing. A few things about this. There are some misconceptions about mindful breathing. I think the big one is that people think it's a religion. Um, there's no religion around breathing, right? We were born breathing and we will breathe until our last moments. Um, breathing is just breathing. Um, other misconceptions that it's only used to regulate negative emotions or to prolong positive ones, or that we have to do this particular breathing with these different symbols. None of that is necessary. Some clarifications, right? A the goal of mindful breathing is to cultivate deeper awareness of our experiences. And when we breathe mindfully, right, we just breathe normally as we watch it. So I've been doing a lot of talking, and guess what? Now I'm going to do some pausing. I'm going to ask you first, honestly, how often do you just pause and breathe? Really? How many times in the last week have you just said, you know what? I need five minutes to myself. I'm gonna go sit on the couch. I'm gonna sit in the wherever, and I'm gonna take some breaths and just allow myself to deactivate and be present. I'm curious, how many of you are doing that? Okay, now some information about breathing. Most of the time we breathe automatically. We don't, if we had to control our breath every day, we'd go crazy, right? We're just breathing. It's an automatic process. But when we do it voluntarily, when we decide to deliberately slow our breath, right? That we overtake the metabolic part and it activates our motor cortex. This all is in the service of helping us to activate our parasympathetic nervous system, which is the soothing system and inhibit the sympathetic nervous system, which is where all that cortisol is pumping. In addition, it improves our respiratory and cardiovascular function. The impact, greater focus and attention, less chatter, better functioning, list goes on. So everyone, I know that you probably didn't expect to be doing a breathing exercise in a webinar, but guess what? You are. So we're gonna try this together. And I know some of you are going to get this. You, this is where your uh, distraction strategy might come in. You're going to start texting somebody or looking at your email. I'm going to ask you to give yourself the permission to pause. Just do it. Be with us right now. Just get comfortable in your seat and pause. Just take a breath. Whatever is comfortable for you. Maybe put a gentle smile on your face, even if you're stressed. There is something called the facial feedback hypothesis, which is that the muscles on our face interact with our brains. And if we put a gentle smile, it makes us a little harder to have negative thoughts. I'm gonna share with you my favorite breathing exercise. It's one that I learned over 30 years ago from a mindfulness teacher named Thich Nhat Hanh. And it's so simple that it's ridiculous, but it helps me throughout the day. And it's my go-to strategy for when I'm having difficulty sleeping. I don't have trouble sleeping. I have trouble falling asleep. And my brain goes on and on and on. So I'm gonna go with our phrase on the bottom. If I can ask everyone to get good posture. And I'm gonna ask you to take an inhale. And when I say the word in, we're gonna breathe in. And when I say the word out, we're going to say the word out. And then we're going to go deep and slow and calm and, re and ease. And then finally, we're going to put a little smile and we're just going to release. Together with me, please. However way you want to put your eyes is fine. We're going to go in.
and out. And breathe in and say deep. And breathe out and say slow. This is all in your mind. Breathe in and say calm. Breathe out and say ease. Breathe in with a little gentle smile on your face and then let it go and say release. So before I move on, that was about one minute, if that. I just wanna get some honest feedback. What did it feel like? Honestly, just type some ideas in. What did it feel like? Somebody wrote amazing, releasing, comforting, relaxing, calming. It doesn't cost any money to take time to breathe. Right? Everything that I'm gonna be sharing with you today is free. Your breathing is free. All strategies are free. Next, we're gonna jump into self-care, nutrition, sleep and exercise. So a few things about taking care of ourselves. Remember, in times like this, we want to have a strong immune system. We want to have good nutrition. You got to drink water. You got to limit your caffeine and alcohol intake. I'm sorry to be the deliverer of that. I'm drinking way more coffee than I ever have. And I really, today was my day like, Mark, you got to cut it out. We also are drinking wine with dinner every night. I'm like, we got to cut down. Try to avoid processed foods if you can. Right? When we're stressed, we're more likely to turn to high fat, high sugar foods. Take your vitamins and try to avoid getting hangry. Right? We know that glucose right, is the only fuel used by the brain. But importantly, our brain doesn't produce glucose. That means that we get the, our energy from eating, but it's only eating right here in particular healthy carbs. You want to put in healthy carbs throughout the day. Not, you know, don't go crazy because you're on a carb-free diet and everybody's doing keto and shmito. That's fine. You got to eat a little carbs to give yourself that brain energy. It also helps to improve your memory. How about sleep? Healthy sleep includes both duration and quality, right? Poor sleep equals poor restoration equals poor functioning. A few tips. Can you try no devices for one hour before sleep? I, made, I promised myself yesterday that I was going to put my device in my bathroom so that I could not be woken up by my alarm and check my email in the middle of the night and wake up checking my email, giving myself that space, that freedom. Can you do something like that? Maybe do a little light stretching or even take a warm shower or bath before bed. It helps to deactivate, get you settled for bed. The reason why this matters is that inadequate or excessive sleep increases our anxious symptoms, fatigue and depressive symptoms. We know that when we have unhealthy sleep, we're a little bit more hostile and tense. Our resources are depleted and it also disrupts our cognitive functioning. And then there's exercise, right? We've got to keep our body strong. Like as a matter of fact, Tim, I saw you did a, a piece on Instagram about this yesterday. It is so important that we keep our body strong. Unfortunately, obesity is at around 40% in our nation. About 20% of our children and adolescents are obese. You've got to build in an exercise routine. It's harder when you don't have a routine. So the question is, how are you fitting it in? Is it in the morning? Is it in your afternoon break? Is it in the evening? Because the research is clear. When you reduce, or when you not reduce, when you have the uh, release of endorphins when you exercise, you're less anxious, you're less depressed, you're less stressed, it increases your self-esteem and your concentration and attentiveness. One study that I really like showed that 50% of participants engaged in an aerobic exercise, the others did business as usual, and then they were exposed to a stressor. And guess what? The people who had just finished exercising were kinder and more compassionate and had fewer negative feelings, even when they were stressed out by somebody. So there is real biology the benefits of exercise. So I'm begging you to fit it in.